I recommended 25K in his situation. And the reason why is aside from taking income, he plans on using the policy pretty heavily through loans. So I wanted to leave enough cash, cash flow from his perspective to be able to pay those, pay those loans back. Because if you're going to take income, it makes sense to pay the loans back by the time you're going to start taking income. So the funding, we looked at 10 years. We talked about um, a 20-year funding period as well, or I put that together in the presentation, but we looked at 10. This is based on a mass mutual 10 pay, this particular illustration. So we've got the funding. Performance looks good. Breaking even between years four and five, just about 90% in the first year. So it's beefed up for the cash value. Like that, that's what he's interested in. So again, he started at 44. This illustration here is going to display income coming out beginning age 65 or 64 when we look at it. And just for, for your awareness too, and everyone watching this, these income illustrations, I've got them on Excel but we put them on Excel because when we look at the actual illustration, here's what they look like. <laughs> Supplemental values, part one. Do you see the death benefit here anywhere? No. So we've got to go to part two where we get a breakdown of the life insurance figures. So we are going to go through the illustration or we would go through that with anyone that wants to and we would from a compliance standpoint too. However, for the sake, sake of our conversation today, we'll keep it simple on Excel. I promise everything you see on Excel matches that illustration you just saw because we just exported it to Excel. So again, funded for 10 years, then not paying anything for another 10 years. He is borrowing and repaying during this time period, but then starting to take income. So in purple, we're going to see exactly how much he's pulling out per year. So starts it after year 20, so at age 64 in this illustration, it takes 35K per year. So the $35,000 per year, when you take money from a life insurance policy, there are two ways you can do it. One, you can take out what is called a policy withdrawal, or two, you can take a policy loan. In retirement, when we are taking income, and we have zero desire to pay anything back, what I'll typically recommend, what I like to do, is first take withdrawals up to our cost basis, and then once we hit our cost basis, we begin to loan out the rest. And the reason why is because when we take withdrawals, it's like withdrawing money from any account. You take it out, it's gone. It's no longer earning interest. However, it's not a loan, so it does not accrue any loan interest. And the simple answer is if you withdraw first up to your cost basis, which is how much you paid in, that is not taxable. But also when you look at the guarantees or conservative illustration, you're typically able to pull out more money. So it's, it's a bit safer, in my opinion, as far as showing illustrations to someone. When we run the numbers conservative, I'd rather undershoot what we think they can get because then if they can get more, they're happy. If we overshoot it and they can get less, that can become a problem. Okay, so before you go any further yeah. on that on that point, is there a world where a client or somebody would start with loans if they, for whatever reason, don't do a reduced paid up at age 65 and maybe want to continue to keep funding it? In, in that case, would it be more advantageous to not do a withdrawal at that age and do loans instead? Um, that's a good question. So if if there's a chance that they might want to continue to pay the loan interest or add money to the policy out of pocket, that's where loans can make sense. But if their goal is purely taking income and they want it tax free, usually we'll recommend withdrawing up to the cost basis first and then flipping to loans. And the main reason why is when you look at the guarantees and, and looking at history and what corporations do when they will practice this strategy for their executives, that's typically what they will practice. Withdraw first, then begin to take out loans. If you take a loan initially, you're gonna to begin to accrue loan interest right out of the gates. And like if I run an illustration two and a half years ago where variable loan rates were at 3%, yeah, a loan forever would look very, very good because I've got the 3% cost to borrow. And then also I'm getting a dividend on the entire cash value. The issue with that is if that variable loan rate adjusts, so like with mass mutual, 
two and a half years ago, 3% for the Mass Mutual 10 pay product. Now it's 5.7% or 5.4 or something like that. I got to look at it. Next month, March, it'll be 5.04%. Point is, it's still a lot higher than the three it was. That means a lot less income can be pulled if I'm not paying the loan interest. Because what a policy does, if I'm not going to pay the loan interest out of pocket, the policy is going to take a loan against the cash value to pay that loan interest. So there's going to be drag on the policy there. So just to alleviate that risk when someone is purely taking income, we'll typically withdraw first because that extends the time period that I have to have loan interest accruing where I'm not paying it. Got it. Okay, that's clear.